A tornado outbreak is becoming even more likely as the Storm Prediction Center has issued a massive risk for severe weather over the next couple of days. We are talking potential for damaging storms, including tornadic activity. You guys definitely do need to be weather aware with this storm system as things are expected to get pretty nasty. Now, in this video, we'll be going over everything you guys need to know in terms of the models. We'll go over the overall outlooks and basically the regions where we can expect that severe weather potential. Now, before we go ahead and get on into it, if you have not already, consider leaving a like, hitting that subscribe button to help boost this video be greatly appreciated and if you could share as well that'll be greatly appreciated so taking a look at the current weather patterns this is the current radar overlay with the jet stream you guys can notice out west we do have this area of low pressure that is really starting to kick up here now this is going to be the main engine or the main system that's going to drive this severe weather so over the next couple of days this area of low pressure will work its way here to the east northeast Eventually, once it gets its way towards the central plains, it'll start to pull up a lot of moisture, a lot of warm air, and you guys are going to notice that it's going to start to become pretty muggy outside as a lot of that water vapor works its way from the Gulf into the country, setting us up for severe weather here. So, alrighty, so working our way over here to the Storm Prediction Center for the official outlooks regarding this upcoming severe weather event. Starting for today, not really much going on here. A couple thunderstorms possible out there by Arizona. Stuff starts happening for tomorrow. So, for tomorrow, across portions of northwestern Oklahoma and southwestern Kansas, there will be the possibility for some severe weather, although relatively low probability, as well as overall low impact level. Uh, we do not have a chance for tornadoes tomorrow, damaging winds will be a possibility and also hail will also be a concern so then we work our way over here into monday now that's kind of when things are going to start to become potentially more and more severe although we do have a larger marginal risk here for severe weather on monday across texas portions of oklahoma now look at this. Once we work our way into Tuesday, that's where the big risk is located. As of right now, the Storm Prediction Center has maxed out the risk here regarding the severe weather potential. So areas in the orange really, really, really needs to watch out for the possibility of severe weather as it is definitely quite possible. And uh, unfortunately, like we mentioned again, uh, tornadoes, I do also believe that large hail and damaging winds will also be a big problem, especially damaging winds um, and tornadoes, I think are going to be probably the main issue here. But if you're to orange, you have at least a 30% chance probability of seeing severe weather within a 25 mile radius from your home. So basically, within 25 miles around you, you have a 30% chance of seeing severe weather contributing to possible tornadic activity, damaging winds, and hail. Now across the yellow it is also an area that we really need to look out for as well, as uh, we have a little bit lower of a probability, you know, so a little bit less likely, but still. 15% chance for severe weather of all hazards could be quite possible. Overall, this is a very big risk area here, and a lot of people are at risk regarding this system here. So, then we work our way over here into Wednesday. Now, the severe weather will continue into Wednesday across the Mid-Atlantic and portions of the coastal southeast, out there by North South Carolina, portions of coastal Georgia, working our way up here towards the Mid-Atlantic, out there by coastal Virginia, Central Virginia as well included, Maryland, portions of Delaware, and even southern New Jersey, could get the possibility for severe weather. So anything further than that, we do not have any forms of any more risks, but definitely it looks like Tuesday is going to be the worst day overall regarding that severe weather potential. Alrighty, everybody, so now we're diving our way into the models here, starting off with the American GFS model here. So this is our long-range American model. So in the southwest, we talked about that area of low pressure that's been kicking off here. As you can see out there by California, this is kind of where it's at right now. If you guys do want to follow along in the time, it is in the top right here. You guys can see that is how you guys can check what time we're looking at. So anyways, we work our way down in time. We do have a little disturbance across the northeast. Not really anything super, super crazy. A little bit of snow is possible, but that's not the main concern here. So we work our way down in time. As we approach right around March 4th, you guys can see that we get that area of low pressure that develops across the central country. And around this time, this is when we're going to really start to see a lot of that moisture a lot of that humid, muggy air working its way into the country, warming things up dramatically. But unfortunately, on the backside, there's going to be some cooler air pulling its way in. So you're going to notice quite the change in weather going from warm to cooler within a pretty quick amount of time. So anyway, so we have this low pressure that really starts kicking off across the central country. It works its way over here throughout March 4th, which is going to be the, the main day for severe weather. You can see, according to the GFS, there is a lot of rain, a lot of moisture and storm activity that will be kicking off across the south, um, even driving a lot of 
of rainfall, which we'll get into here in a little bit as well, across the Ohio Valley and portions of the Midwest. Now, there will be a little bit of snowfall on this storm here too, uh, potentially across you know the north, like the upper Midwest for areas like Minnesota, uh, the northern plains throughout the Dakotas. Could see a little bit of snow out of this system here, but the main threat out of this storm is going to be for severe weather overall. Now, comparing this with the ECMWF or the European model here, uh, when taking a look here at the latest uh, run, you guys can see that there's really relatively the same idea um, expected here. You can see that low really kicks off across the central plains throughout the 4th, which will be driving that cold front in a long line of severe weather, once again, with all hazards being likely. Um, and also, once again, there could be some snow, uh, possibly a little bit further down on the Euro, having it kind of work its way in towards areas like Iowa and perhaps even areas out there by Missouri. But don't count on it right now. But um, there will definitely be that shot for some snowfall far up north with the storm. But once again, the main concern is going to be the threat for severe weather. Alrighty, everybody, so now we're working our way over here into the expected amount of precipitation out here. You can see that a lot of the country, especially out there by the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Southeast will be seeing a pretty good amount of rainfall. So these areas in this pinkish color will be seeing at least an inch or two. Um, there will definitely be some spots for higher amounts of precipitation locally being possible, which some regions could get two or more inches of rainfall. So there will be a decent amount of rainfall potential out there, but the greatest amount of rain is going to be across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Southeast with this storm system. All right, now working our way over here into the snowfall forecast for the next 48 hours. It's just a little too early to look at how much snowfall we could see with this upcoming system, just simply because it's a little bit farther out for that. I mean, typically, I don't like to look anything further than 48 hours for snowfall accumulations, just because of how much things can change. But throughout the next two days, uh, like we mentioned, there's a little bit of snow in the northeast here, especially out there by the Great Lakes region, uh, you know, towards the coastal areas. You know, we'll be seeing a bit of lake effect snow. Some regions out by kind of central New York uh, could see up to five or more inches of snowfall but once again not really anything super significant but in the west out here by California those upper elevations will have potential to see possibly up and over a foot of snow so if you guys are up there just know that there is going to be a little bit of snow as that low pressure system we've been tracking worked its way through and drives a bit of snow up there. Alrighty guys, so now we're going to do a little bit more of an in-depth view regarding the models for this upcoming severe weather system. So there's really three main ingredients that we look at for severe weather events. The first one being CAPE or the amount of instability or simply the thunderstorm fuel that's in the atmosphere. And that is what we're starting off here now. So we work our way down in time and once that severe weather starts to kick off, you know, as that low pressure system builds its way into the central country, you notice that we really generate a lot of unstable air across the areas here in that purple and pinkish color, uh, with the blue kind of being the heaviest amounts of instability out there. So these regions will have the fuel for potential thunderstorm activity. I mean, you can see that that potential goes all the way up into the Midwest as high as Iowa, according to this model here. So we work our way through the fourth, going our way into the fifth here. Um, you can kind of see that a little bit of that instability remains across the deep south, you know, towards like coastal Mississippi, coastal Alabama. So as we work our way in there, there could be a little bit more storm activity going on. And then, of course, as we work our way here towards pretty much the later portion of the fifth, you can see that we start to generate some more instability across the mid-Atlantic, giving us that risk that we are looking at from the Storm Prediction Center because of the threat you know, for thunderstorm and severe weather activity, there will be, of course, enough fuel for those storms in general. So that is the American GFS. Now, when comparing this with the European model, it's obviously good to look at more than one model. Um, you can see, I mean, pretty much the same thing is expected uh, with a lot of that instability really driving its way up into the country, you know, given that potential for thunderstorm activity, possibly severe weather as well for some of these regions here. But, you know, as high as Iowa, you know, according to these two models, there could be enough instability for thunderstorm activity that's pretty far up in the country i mean you guys got to remember we are now in march so this is going to become more and more common as we work our way throughout this month here but anyway so we work our way further down in time and pretty much the same thing you know what the gfs was suggesting as the euro does here is that we start to build our way uh we start to build some instability in towards the mid-atlantic giving that potential for those thunderstorms here right around for late wednesday going into thursday 
Okay, so we talked about the amount of instability or fuel that is going to be in the atmosphere regarding severe weather. So there's really three main ingredients like we mentioned. So CAPE was the first one. Now the second one here, this is our dew point temperature. Uh, we basically measure this to look at the amount of moisture uh, that will be available for these storms. So as we work our way down in time and as that low pressure starts to develop across the central country, it really starts to drive in a lot of that moisture, a lot of that water vapor, increasing the humidity, the mud Bugginess. I mean, we have these dew points here in the 60s, which is the Goldilocks zone for, you know, severe weather and thunderstorms in general. So we will definitely have enough moisture, um, especially when comparing this with our actual temperature. There's really not much of a difference. So the closer your temperature and your dew points are together, the higher the humidity. So there will definitely be a lot of humid air um, available in the atmosphere here. So we work our way down in time, and you can also see once we approach our way in towards, you know, later Wednesday going into Thursday, there will be even enough moisture for storm activity across the mid-Atlantic with that second risk that we do have. Okay, so the final ingredient that we are talking about here now is the wind shear. So basically how strong those winds are throughout the atmosphere. Now this will really give that tornadic potential uh, for these storms. So obviously we looked at the amount of instability that's going to be available in the atmosphere. You can see that we really drive up a lot of fuel for these storms, but look at this. Um, also, you know, as we work our way uh, into more of the winds across the atmosphere, you guys can see that we are going to have some really, I mean, really strong lower level winds here. We're talking a good 70, 75 knots of lower level wind shear, which, you know, given the amount of instability we have under that and how strong these lower level winds are, will really get those storms to organize. Now here's one of the things I really want to show you. So the lower level winds, you know, in the lower portion of the atmosphere are moving relatively north. And as we go up in altitude, you guys can see that the wind direction actually changes uh, here to the northeast. So that change in wind direction uh, and an increase in wind speed as you gain altitude can create the spin needed for tornadic activity. So, you know, once again, there's going to be some very strong winds in the atmosphere because of how strong that area of low pressure is going to be here. And, uh, you know, with all that instability that we do have underneath uh, and all that wind shear that's above, that's going to really give the atmosphere potential for a lot of nasty severe weather. And unfortunately, like I mentioned, tornadoes being the main concern, I do believe we do have the potential for significant tornadic activity, potential for tornadoes EF2 or greater. So really, really look out there for that and of course secondly i think that there will be a big problem regarding damaging winds as well and then i do think that there will be a threat for hail as well uh, there towards the end but anyways my friends well that's going to go ahead and wrap it up if you guys did enjoy it consider leaving a like hitting that subscribe button it'll be greatly appreciated uh once again everybody y'all please be careful out there we'll continue to give you guys updates on the system as the days progress and uh, we'll make sure to keep you guys weather aware but all right everybody thank you so much for joining you guys have a wonderful rest of your day please stay safe out there and we'll catch you guys in the next one Peace out, my friends. See you later on.